The Bible says that wine is your greatest enemy. Should you drink? Wine is greatest enemy? But don't you know what the Bible says? That you must love your enemy. And that's what I'm doing. The Bible says love your enemy, but it doesn't say drink your enemy. We always have our ways out of everything. But Krishna says, whatever you do, offer it to me. Fine, go ahead. Offer it to him. And then also he adds to it another instruction, which is very popular, you know. Karma ne vadikara se mahaleshu kadacha. Second chapter, 37th verse says, 27th verse, 47, sorry. Says, you do all your duty. You're looking for a job. Put all your hard work to it. Go for the interview. And if you do not get the job, don't be frustrated and angry and miserable. Leave the fruits. I've got something better for you. Don't worry about that. Leave the fruits. And that you will be only able to do. This philosophy is easy. The Westerners are also trying to adopt the great truths of the Bhagavad Gita in day to day, even manual life. So to do your work and leave the fruits is only possible when you are able to have a connection with God. A connection that I belong to him. I have a soul. I have an eternal relationship with him. The conscious, the awareness of this will help you to reach that stage where you will be equal in situation. If I get a job, fine. If I'm not going to get it, I'll get a better one, no problem. So you're ready to let go instead of going completely berserk. That's what the teacher, the uh, philosopher the Gita teaches you. So you offer everything. The next way to practically implement this is through the day, try to devote just a couple of seconds, wherever you are, home, work, college, or you're out somewhere with friends. Just a few seconds. Krishna is with me. He's standing right there and watching me. Yes. Mentally, think of that. He is watching. And we know that every religion specifies this truth that he resides within all beings. Yeah, Mantra 4 says, He is your friend. He resides within you. Our vision is material. Our mind is material. When we are able to, with spiritual practice, purify this mind and receive divine energy, then we will be able to experience His presence in every particle of the world. The saints live in this world. And what was the experience? See, there was no enemy, no matter how badly they were dealt with. People abused them, people beat them. Why did they have this uh, attitude of grace and forgiveness? Because they could see the presence, the all pervading presence of their beloved friend and master, the Supreme Being. They achieve that. That's why you find the lives of all saints, there are two prominent qualities. They are always humble, they are always forgiving. And how can they be? Because they see the presence of that divine spirit in all beings. So remember, you don't have to do anything, you don't even have to hold your hands or do anything. This thing he is there. Or whether he is inside me, he's watching me. I better be careful. You know, whenever you know somebody is watching you, then you are careful of doing anything wrong, isn't it? That person is watching me. I should like the, the cameras you have. The moment you see a camera, you slow down. And the moment you pass, you pick up the speed. If you happen to know that there is a car and a cop is chasing you, then you go slow. Somebody is watching you. But he is watching you all the time. Whatever karma you do, He's got a record of that. Remember that. 
So with him the problem is he even knows our thoughts. We can hide our thoughts from people, they are private. You are sitting next to each other, you are probably thinking of the other person. Yeah. This person seems to be so distracted, I'm not sure he doesn't even understand English. I can see that person, why do you want to And he's sleeping over there. So you are secretly thinking of that thing, sitting next to the person. I think she's dressed up too loudly, that's why she's so old. All this is in your mind, that person doesn't know. Quite happily, we smile at each other, nobody knows, but he knows. So there is an indwelling spirit over there who is watching your every thought. If we can just do, put that into life a few seconds, every one or two hours, put an alarm on your mobile, and the moment it rings or buzzes or vibrates, oh, I've got to remember. Finish, a few seconds. Yeah, yes. Till you get into a habit of it, then you don't have to remind yourself. That will be greatly helpful to you. Why? Because you will be careful, you will be cautious about what you are doing. And secondly, you will start experiencing the pure joy, a companionship. And you will always share your problems, share your happiness with somebody who understands and will help you. I can challenge you on that. He's always there to help you. He's got an expectation from you. He wants to give you that pure joy. And we are running into the world to experience permanent happiness. He is the ocean, the abode of ocean of bliss, of love. So that's one practice. And the other practice is a daily appointment with him. You have appointments with so many people through the day. Have an appointment with them. If you want to be physically fit, don't you go for a walk? And today pranayam people do every day, something or the other. So if you want to be physically fit, you just spend about 15-20 minutes, probably half an hour. If you want to be mentally fit and spiritually happy, then make it a practice to have an appointment with the abode of bliss. When you connect with them, as a saint said, finding God is a funeral of all sorrows. So, have an appointment. Don't miss that appointment. And what do you do during the appointment? Don't keep asking. Give me a baby, give me a house, give me some money, give me this, give me that, give me that. We have only a business transaction with her. Why don't you ask for happiness? Pure joy. Why don't you ask for unconditional love? Why don't you ask to be able to serve them? Ask for the real things. So during that time, just chant or a prayer from the heart. It doesn't have to be certain specific words. It has to be from your heart. That's important. It should come from your heart. And during that prayer, we must meditate. Feel His presence and not this body for a little time. Whole day we are thinking of ourselves as a body. If somebody tells you, you're looking so old, you're miserable. Or you look so young, 20 years younger than your age, you're happy. But the soul is eternal. We are all the same age. Why don't you be happy with that? Nobody is older, nobody is younger. We are eternal. So body consciousness is there with you 24 hours. What is 20 minutes? Half an hour. I am a soul. I belong to that Supreme Being. He is the creator. He has given me life. It is due to him. So that 20 minutes appointment, I tell you, it will work, give you more than what your daily exercise. When you walk 20 minutes a day, brisk walk, doesn't it keep you healthy? You don't have to walk through the day for that. In the same way, this daily appointment is a must. Don't miss that. So this is hands to work and mind to God. Just a little idea of how we can put it into practice. You can listen to the beautiful verse of Ramakrishna Paramahansa. God, time is running. Life is also running for each person. 